What's up guys, welcome back to Twin Cherry Studio and today I'm going to show you how to play 3DS games like Legend of Zelda Link Between World on your Mac using Citro. I'm going to show you how to install it, all the different settings, how to set up your controllers and things like that. So sit back, relax, hit that like button and let's just uh, dive into the tutorial. So to get the emulator you need to go to citro-emu.org and click the link in the description down below. Click download here. And then it's going to detect what we've got. So I'm going to click download for Mac OS Universal. If you're on other platforms, you can click other platforms. If you want to get it for Windows, it's now available on Google Play as well. I've done a video on that. It is amazing on Google Play. So I'm going to go to our downloads folder and click citra-setup-mac.dmg. Double click to open and then click citra-setup-mac and double click on that. And it's going to say that it cannot be used because the developer cannot be verified. Click cancel. Go to the settings, system settings, go to privacy and security. And make sure that you've checked App Store and identified developers. And then it will have this here to say it was blocked to be used because it cannot be identified as a developer. Click open anyway. Use your password to set it up. And then click open one more time. Mac does have this way of trying to stop you from installing anything onto your Mac. So click welcome to the Citra setup, click continue. Click continue again. And you're going to want to choose between Citra Canary and Citra Nightly. Uh, I install both of them because the Canary one is probably a in development version. And it changes, it's usually a bit untested and Nightly is obviously what it says on the tin. It said Nightly update to Citra. Canary is more of kind of a monthly one. They both occupy only 300 megabytes of space, so it's entirely up to you. So if there's exact some new features that are currently untested, but they're brand new features, Nightly's the one, and Canary is probably the most stable out of the two. So I'm click continue, accept the license agreement, read it all, and then press ready to install and click install. And now we wait for it to download the, uh, the archive, it shouldn't take too long, it's not a big one. Once that's done, it's finished, click done. You can close everything, eject the installer, go to your applications folder and find Citra. There'll be a folder here, double click on that. And then you can choose between Canary and Nightly. I'm gonna choose Canary for now and double click Citra QT to open Citra. So mine is currently in Korean because I have a Korean laptop. So if I go to, first I asked me about usage data. Do I want to send them usage data? Yes or no, it's entirely up to you. I just currently need to change my, change mine to English. Oh, UI, uh, English. And there we go, everything's changed back to English. So I'll click OK, except for this for some reason. Why is this not English? So let's open Citra again. There we go, everything is in English now. So if you come across that problem, if you just go to Citra, uh, it'll be preferences, which now settings, go to UI and change the UI to English. So once we've launched Citra, we're gonna to want to add our games list. So I'm gonna double click. I'm gonna to go to the desktop where my games are, click my 3DS games, click open. And I say all of my games are there. I've not got many at the moment because I've not transferred them over to my MacBook. One thing I like about Citra is it tells you exactly what the compatibility is going to be like as it's been tested before. So Monster Hunter 4 is just going to be okay. Ocarina of Time is going to be okay. But A Link Between Worlds is going to be great. It tells me the region is a lot of information there. But before we start, we've got a couple of things we're going to go through as well. So I'm going to go to the preferences section. So here's where we can change the speed of the emulation. So if you want to go through some of the cutscenes a little bit faster, you can mess about with it here. And here is where you sign up for the Citra web service if you want to play online games. So if you just click the sign up, get your token, copy your token into there and click verify, you'll be able to play games online. And I might do a video on that in the future. And then in the UI section, this is where you choose your UI theme, your interface language. We've already been through that and your game list icon size and other things like that. So if we go down, what we want to go to is system. Then the username is currently set to Citra. I'm just going to change it to uh, TCS for Twin Cherry Studio. And then here's where you can set up how many play coins you have, if it affects the game, uh, the clock, the country, other things like that. 
that you want to set up and if you want to configure your camera and use different storage other than a virtual SD card. Next, we go to the graphics section. This is where you can choose the resolution. It's not in the typical denominations of 1080p, uh, 720 and things like that. So I'm gonna just click on the 1441. Six times native is probably good enough for me. A texture filter, if you want to mess around with the texture filters, you can do that when we get into the game and I'll show you that. And then the screen layout, and I'll show you that when we get into a game as well. And finally, the controls. I'm going to set this to my controller. So this is where we set up all of our controls. There is an auto map feature. So if I click auto map, press OK. After pressing OK, press any button on your joystick. So I'm going to press OK and I'm going to press X on my controller. And then as you can see, my controller has been set up. Hopefully it's the right one. But if it's not the right one, I can press that and then press A. And I can test, test and see, I can mess around with things here as well. So you just need to click the button and change the controls if you want. But auto map feature does run pretty well. I don't know why I changed that dead zone so, so far. There we go. Okay. Okay. So let's start with Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Let's start the game. So as you can see, we currently have the screen set like this. So there's two separate screens here. So if I want to touch something, I can use my mouse. So let's change that to T O N Tony. Okay. So let's say we're in a game like Monster Hunter 4 and we don't really want the screen to be that big. If we go to view and we go to screen layout, we can change the screens to different ones. So I personally like the large screen with the small bit here in the corner that I can touch with a mouse. Or you can change it to kind of a hybrid screen if you want. So you can just mess around with the screen layouts here. Or you can have them both in separate windows. So if you've got two screens, you can have them both on separate windows as well. I much prefer the large screen. This is probably my favorite of the ones. So let's say we wanted to skip through this cutscene. because It's taken an awful long time. I remember these cutscenes taking an awful long time. If I go to settings, I can then go to the controls, go to hotkeys, and there is a toggle for increasing the speed limit, so it's just the plus button on the keypad, so if I go here, plus, so shift plus, so as you can see at the bottom right corner, it's changing my speed, I'm just going to speed this up, so I can, to 2000%, so I can get through these cutscenes, I remember how awful these cutscenes are, wow that looks amazing, this is apparently the best way to play Ocarina of Time right now, so I'm going to be definitely giving this a go at some point. See, I'm speeding through the cutscene because I just, just don't have the patience anymore for cutscenes. So just to show you as well, if I go to the preferences, I go to graphics, and then I'm just going to turn the resolution down. So I've got no texture filter on right now. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to turn the resolution down to the native resolution click OK and that's what the game looks like with the native resolution see and the emulator itself and Vulcan does fantastic work let me change the preferences again let's go to graphics change it back to the 1440 version and we'll add a little, a little filter see what that looks like click OK there we go it's cleared up and it looks a lot smoother and Link's house is actually filled and not just a random drawing and I'm running the game at 200% so I need to slow that down to get back so if I press shift and minus I'm going to bring that down if I press, press the minus key I can bring that back down to 100% there we go back at 100% the game's running at 30 frames per second, which is beautiful. But as you can see, it runs and it looks great. And that is how you play 3DS games on Mac OS. Take care, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And uh, don't do anything I wouldn't do.